So you guys, this video, we talk about what Foodie Beauty has done and said, her behavior. We show clips. We talk about what Foodie Beauty Twitter is saying. And some of the things Foodie Beauty says and some of her behavior may be disturbing to some. Just giving you a heads up. Hey, you guys, and welcome to a new What Foodie Beauty Twitter is Saying video. This is going to be a wild one. So if you missed what happened with Chantel yesterday, she was in a whole mood. Many people think she's like coming down, withdrawing. I don't know, but she's been extra vile. And yesterday she was raging again in her community post, throwing full on temper tantrums. And she went live and the best way I can describe it is it's, it was one of the most vile live streams I've seen from her in a while. Many people were comparing it to Cuba Rage. It was bad. She gave her opinion on current events that are such sensitive things to discuss. Um, she was so absolutely almost cruel about the topics. The language she used wasn't of somebody who... I don't, I've never seen somebody wearing an abaya and hijab speaking and acting like Chantal. I've just never seen it. Her language was absolutely disgusting. She kept calling FFG a word that she has been told is considered anti-Semitic. It's a horrible word to use. It's hurtful, it's hateful, it's offensive. And she kept repeating the word over and over and over again. Now, I don't know if YouTube took the live down. I don't know if she privated it because it was that bad. But anyways, we're going to talk about that live stream. We're going to talk about what people of Twitter are saying. And basically, I'm just covering what everybody's talking about. And yeah, here's a little heads up. Some things may be hard to hear, uncomfortable to hear. So there's your trigger warning right now. So to start this video off, Salt and Sass says, You said all that shit with your full chest, Chantal. Don't be a coward and keep it private now. Put your convictions where your mouth is. Always open and out there. Mad Pooper asked, What'd she say? I missed it. And Salt and Sass said, It was a lot. Shenanigans has the highlights clipped. Let's go head over to Shenanigans Twitter. So there was a clip. I'm actually glad this got um, clarified. There was a clip I saw going around last night. So it's probably good. I waited on making this video of Chantel just saying you should go to Gaza. And it was floating around everywhere. Everybody was really upset by it. But Shenanigans clarified and said apparently Chantel was responding to a super chat, which told her to go to Gaza and she read it out loud. I took this tweet down because I don't want to spread misinformation. Yeah, and then somebody said, oh, I was wondering if that was what really happened. It was hard to tell from her tone. It was hard to tell because the way she said it. But Salt and Sauce says she usually reads the ones she agrees with and with some gusto. After looking at her TikTok, I don't doubt she actually feels the same. We need to talk about her TikTok. It's absolutely disgusting, but we need to keep it on the internet for the world to see who Foodie Beauty really is. She reposted this tweet. P.I. actually shared this. And P.I. said, saving this for when or if Foodie Beauty tries to come to the United States. Imagine celebrating any civilian death no matter what side you're on. Sick. So she reposts this. It says one minute silence for Israel. And then it says me. And then she responds under this so proudly. Reposted this video. A lot of people are really upset about that. And not surprisingly, it's anybody who mocks the deaths of innocent people losing their lives. Something is seriously wrong with them. And I'm going to read a couple comments. Toxic Butterfly says, Wow, she is so incredibly hateful that it's disturbing. How can she think that is appropriate? How can she be so ignorant and stupid? What a demonic piece of... Rosa said she's mocked the death of children before. This doesn't shock me. Buttersnap said, Wait, Foodie reposted this clip of a guy screaming for a moment of silence for Israel? Wow. She takes on each day as a challenge to be a bigger, more worthless, ignorant piece of poo she can possibly be. Just wow. Anyone mocking the deaths of innocent people is a terrible person. Balo said she's disgusting yet again. It's the civilians on both sides of this that are the ones in the crap and actually do need our prayers even though I'm not religious. I'm for the innocent people that are caught up in BS that they have no control over.
Alex Shook, who is currently Alex's Spooky on Twitter, reminded us of the time Foodie Beauty sympathized with a predator. So this clip is from Marley Hendricks. Alex said, for Marley Hendricks' new video, add us are to the list. Also, platformer. For context, the person she is talking about essayed a child. Remember Karate Joe? He used to be a regular in Foodie Beauty's chat. I believe he was even a mod, you guys. And Foodie Beauty in this clip says she has no comment, then proceeds to comment. So she stuck up for Karate Joe a lot. She said that uh, basically he shouldn't be judged on his past, which is interesting because that's all she does is judge people based on their past. But um, many people found this in very poor taste to defend somebody who was actually like convicted of these things. I have no comment about Karate Joe. If somebody pays their debt to society, I'm not saying like, yes, okay. I just like, you know what I mean? Like, like these people will like, like just throw eggs at the house, go beat them up like all the time. And, and you can say, yeah, they deserve it. They're gross, whatever. But yeah, but come on. You know what I mean? Like not everyone deserves a tent redemption. Yeah, that's true actually. But I well, hopefully by now, if you're new to Foodie Beauty, you have an idea of who she is. If you're not new and you forgot some of this stuff, I'm, I'm here to remind you. Internet never forget. Because Foodie Beauty thinks if you delete, it's gone forever, and that just isn't so. D'Angry Scott shared this clip and said the exact quote, Go back to Egypt, you refugee piece of crap. You don't even deserve to be in Canada. Remember when Foodie Beauty said that? And then D'Angry Scott said, Were to believe Foodie Beauty cares deeply about the plight of Palestine, though? I'm sure she'll say it's fine because she was a victim of his abuse. And this is a clip of Foodie Beauty talking about Nader. It. Oh, sorry. Go back to Egypt. You can refugee pieces. You don't even deserve to be in Canada. You should be deported. You deserve to be hung by president. You deserve everything you get. Don't you do not deserve to be in Canada. You so you know how Salon Foodie Beauty have been running their mouth, saying that there's no proof that BBJ was neglected, which again, neglect is a form of abuse. Well, let's read. Let's see. Salah said, and I quote, where is the vet control paper proof of any of that? Hussein Chantel abused or neglected the cat. Nothing reveals. Hello, zombies. Hello. Anybody can answer brain dead. Prove the vet formal paper. So FFG went ahead and proved the vet's formal paper. It says that client adopted her last night from a woman in Ottawa who was going to have her euthanized. An appointment has already been made for March 2nd to see a vet. So it says, before that appointment, client wanted to have BBJ's nails trimmed for some of them were embedded in her paws. Four of the nails in her front paws had gone through the pads. So they trimmed back and it looked like they cleaned with maybe like an antibiotic, a special solution. Advice to dilute and clean twice daily until appointment. Wow. So I don't think they could still run their mouth. There's veterinary proof. Four of the nails in her front paws had gone through the pads, Foodie Beauty. This is a formal document. Since Foodie Beauty keeps trying to rewrite history, I thought we would remind people of what actually happened. So she keeps saying she had no plans on putting BBJ down, and that's just not the truth. Judge Judy retweeted Miss Robinson's. We'll get to Miss Robinson's tweet in a minute. But Judge Judy said, you can't rewrite history, Foodie Beauty. That what you said about this. The box, the bag, and everything. You wanted BBJ out of the way for a man that said he loves you two hours after you start talking. You're evil. And Miss Robinson said, Foodie Beauty, I was never planning on unaliving my cat. I was going to take her to the vet and let him decide. Also, Foodie Beauty? She's old, snarky priest. She's not going to be in perfect health. Her health is deteriorating. I'm not going to take her to the vet for every little thing for old age with a pet. No. So hate me all you want, but I'm going to put her down. It's going to happen. She's old. She's, she's probably sick. Um, no, I'm not going to let her prolong her life. For Nothing to see here, folks. Just Foodie Beauty being prettier than 99% of Gore World. I talk about it. I don't know. That's right, Peachy. I'm prettier than 99% of Gore World. That's for sure. We have a friendly reminder from Hot Wasabi who said, Friendly reminder, this was Chantel two days before throwing a hijab on and declaring love for Salah, arguing with the VI idiots in defense of the married man she shagged the night before. Did you not just hear me say 
he's not married like he was married we don't know he might be separated whatever he doesn't love his wife they're not in a loving relationship if it was an arranged marriage so what's your problem can i know really three-year beezer three-year fake beezer if you think i would do that i don't know if you're having a bad day holly but i don't really give a shit because you didn't hear me just explain for 20 fucking minutes about the situation <laughs> thank you no i don't care because i'm not doing anything wrong his wife is 8,000 kilometers away, and it was an arranged marriage that they don't love each other. He's here looking for another girlfriend. And if it's lies, I don't know it, so who cares? So, honestly, no, I'm not really thinking too much about it. Like, it's just somebody I'm, like, fucking right now, honestly, that oh, I'm seeing. Okay. And that's it. It's not as deep as that. That's what I'm saying. Why does everything I do have to be a moral, like, a huge moral inadequacy thing? Like, why can't it just be what it is? Why can't we all just have fun? You know? I I'm not ripping a man away from his fucking poor wife and three kids in another country. That's not what I'm doing at all. Dumpster Fire said, wasn't that married man Salah's uncle? I might be wrong. Okay, you guys, I remember people wondering that. Did we ever get any proof? It's definitely not the first time I've heard it. Bunny said she was so hateful to Holly. That was the beginning of the end of her loyal Beezers. Barbecue Chicken caught some of Foodie Beauty's rage from her live stream and she really tries to justify her words and what she says by, oh, well, they just get mad at me when, like, they provoke me and then I finally fight back. It's like, no. Most of this live stream, she was so mad, you guys, that people were commenting on the size of her hand. This is how it goes down. You comment that Foodie Beauty looks unwell. That she's swollen, that her hand doesn't even look the same anymore because Because she's so swollen. If you say that, she will then use anti-Semitic words against you. She will then drag your kids. She will drag your family. She goes way too far. She doesn't know how to just like get even or give the right amount of like pettiness back. In this raid, she's going to justify her behavior, uh, trigger warning, language warning. And yeah, a little red riding hood. I still look a hundred times better than that fat goblin. Disgusting, ugly goblin. Ugliest person on the internet, so whatever. Don't even entertain them. That's what they want. They need it. They need it for content. They have no life. They have no life. They provoke you, and then when you act ugly back, they're like, ooh, ooh, well, too fucking bad. I'll say what I want. Like, if I want to defend myself once in a while, I will. Whatever. Whatever, Toys R Us. Here come the Islam police. I don't care. Is she a good, is she a good Jewish person? Does she do Shabbos? No, she doesn't. So kiss my ass. They're all seething with jealousy. They're so pathetic because every single thing they predicted and their dumb conspiracies is wrong. I'm in Kuwait. I'm in Kuwait, bitches. What are you going to do? Huh? Ugh. I hate them. Anyway, I'm done venting. It's not worth it. I don't, I don't want to talk about... I don't want these stupid people in my space. Like, period. Oh, I'm aggressive, but her cackling like a witch for three hours, calling me a bitch and everything else and my mama whore is okay? Fuck her. She's got her karma with that. Goodbye. Yeah, I have every right to defend myself. I don't care if you're fucking bothered, then unsubscribe. I don't care. Go kiss her ass. I don't care. If anyone who was once a follower and supporter here is now over there, you never were a supporter, so goodbye. I don't care. <clears throat> her mother must be so proud of her. Okay, Draven shares a clip for us and says, let's remember how bad Sam's coat always was. Both cats were full of mats, had filthy coats, feces was all over the carpets due to a fully loaded litter box. BBJ was urinating blood from UTIs. Chantel is an animal abuser. That place was filthy and those cats deserved way better. If anything, I hope from this video you took away some new knowledge of who Foodie Beauty really is and how she really feels about you as a viewer, as a subscriber. How she really feels about people in general. You see the types of words she uses to describe F of G. Hopefully if you stumbled across Foodie Beauty and you're wondering if she's this nice, innocent person that's being bullied off the internet and fat shamed, hopefully you see exactly why people don't like her. It has nothing to do with her weight.
we comment on how unwell she looks, but it has everything to do with who she is to the core, and she's just not a good person. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on everything. I thought we'd end this video with some Michael Furberger art. Not so little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is amazing. Every time I see Michael Furberger art, I'm like, this is my favorite. But I think this is my new favorite. And then, since it is Friday the 13th, there you go. <laughs> Be safe, everybody. Have an amazing weekend. Make good memories and make good choices. And I will see you guys so soon. By the way, thank you for helping me um, be invited to the affiliate program on Twitch. Like, I'm really excited for that. I've been doing all my live streaming over there, and I hope to see you over there. Not a monetized channel, but I will have my buy me a coffee link in um, the comment section. Thank you so much for all your support, you guys. And to anybody who may be feeling triggered over this, it's okay to take a little break. Go enjoy your weekend. Have a great day, great evening, wherever you are. And I'm sure I will see you so soon. Bye, you guys.